Caslock, concerned citizens and sympathizers present at the moment, good morning to you all. On behalf of the leadership of the coalition, I welcome you all to our press conference. The Coalition of Affected Savings and Loans Customers, shortened Caslock, is made up of the customers or depositors of the 23 savings and loans and finance house companies whose licenses were revoked by the Bank of Ghana on the 16th of August 2019. Our main aim and objective is to be a strong and dedicated group that will engage government through all available legal means and the best ways possible in retrieving all our locked up funds or monies in the nearest possible future. First of all, we would like to express our profound gratitude to the government for taking such a bold decision to revoke the licenses of the insolvent financial institutions and providing some funds for bailouts and liquidity interventions to the affected depositors and some financial institutions respectively as it is done in some of the well-known democratic nations like the USA, Canada, UK, Germany, France, etc. We thank the government through the receiver for heeding our plea to revoke the deadline on the submission of the proof of debts, PODs, thereby enabling every affected customer to do so at any time. This will go a long way to enable our colleagues who were unable to do so before the initial deadline dates, especially those who are out of the country then and even at the moment. However, we are very much confused and highly disturbed about a number of issues and figures that are being uttered by the government and its key institutions and officials, such as the Ministry of Finance, the Bank of Ghana, the Minister of Finance, Honorable Ken Oforiata, the Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison, the Receiver, Mr. Eric Nananipa, etc., respectively, that and who are involved in the entire financial sector cleanup exercise involving the nine universal banks, the 23 savings and loans and finance house companies, the 347 microfinance companies, the 39 microcredit companies, and the recently collapsed 53 fund management companies under the securities industry. We are saying this because in the, nine, in the 2019 budget statement, which was read in November 2008 by the Minister of Finance, Honorable Ken Oforiata, made us understand that an amount of 18 billion Ghana cities had been earmarked for the financial sector cleanup exercise. Out of this amount, 12 billion cities was to be used for the cleaning up of the nine universal banks and 6 billion was to be used for cleaning up the savings and loans and finance house companies the microfinance and microcredit companies, which include 23 savings and loans and finance house companies, 347 microfinance companies, and 39 microcredit companies. The same Minister of Finance said that the 12 billion CDs allocated for the Universal Bank's cleanup exercise has shot up to 14 billion and estimated that the 6 billion also allocated for the savings and loans and finance house companies and the microfinance and microcredit companies cleanup exercise would also shoot up to 7 billion cities instead, among, amounting to 21 billion in total, instead of the originally estimated 18 billion cities. Also, out of this 7 billion, about 5.8 billion was allocated to the savings and loans and finance house companies, whereas the remaining would be allocated to the microfinance and microcredit companies. That the 14 billion CDs has been given to the Consolidated Bank Ghana, that's CBG, for the cleanup exercise of the Universal Banks. A little over 9 billion has also been given to the receiver, Mr. Eric Nananipa, to clean up the 347 microfinance and 39 microcredit companies. But when it comes to the 23 savings and loans and finance house companies cleanup exercise, we didn't hear of any amount of money given to the same receiver, Mr. Eric Nananipa, for that exercise. Only three days ago, that's on Monday, 
the 9th of September, uh, December, sorry, Monday, the 9th of December, 2019, that we heard and saw that an amount of 1.2 billion has now been allocated out of the recently approved amount of 15.6 billion by the presidency towards the financial sector cleanup exercise. And with that one too, we are still confused and more about it because we are not clear whether it is some extra amount of money that has been added to the already earmarked ones or it is the total amount of money being earmarked for the entire financial sector cleanup exercise. And we want the government to come clear on this. During the press conference held by the Bank of Ghana on Monday, 25th day of November, 2019. During that press conference, the governor of the Bank of Ghana made us understand that 95% of all depositors have been, who have been affected by the entire financial sector cleanup exercise have been paid their locked up funds or monies. And it is only the remaining 5% who are yet to be paid those making noise around that they haven't received their funds. That statement from the governor was not true and totally uncalled for. We believe strongly that here the government might have been referring to the affected depositors in the universal bank sector alone because on the 7th November 2019, the receiver, Mr. Eric Nananipa, was heard in an interview saying that he was then working assiduously to making sure that from then to December 2019, he would have paid 95% of depositors in the microfinance sector and 90% in the savings and loan sector with even a capped amount of 20,000, of which majority of us are displeased of. Caslock can state that we don't think and believe that depositors in the savings and loans and microfinance sectors who have received their locked up monies or funds as at now will even amount to 10% out of the entire population of these two sectors. Why are we making these claims? We are making these claims because we have been told by these same government institutions and officials that the total number of depositors who have been affected by this financial sector cleanup exercise are about 4.5 million in number. Out of this number, 1.2 million are in the universal bank sector and the remaining 3.3 million are in the savings and loans and microfinance sectors. These 3.3 million depositors form about 74% of the total population of depositors who have been affected by the financial sector cleanup exercise. Even if 10% out of this 74% of depositors have been paid, in addition to those in the universal bank sector whom we lent, can now have access to all their locked up funds or monies through the setting up of the Consolidated Bank Ghana, CBG. The Coalition of Affected Savings and Loans Customers, that is Castlog, would like to appeal to the government to come out clear through its institutions and officials on the issues and figures being raised in the above statements so that there will be some kind of clarity in our minds about the best way forward henceforth. That just as human face was applied by the government by means of bonds and other measures so as to secure depositors' funds or monies in the case of the nine collapsed universal banks by migrating the deposits of customers of these, of two of them to the GCB bank and the remaining seven being consolidated to form the now consolidated bank Ghana, CBG. Same should be done for those of us in the savings and loans and finance house companies and microfinance and microcredit institutions. Even if it means setting up a consolidated savings and loans company and or a consolidated microfinance company, only if the current banking and specialized depositors act permit that. We appeal that all of us are migrated to an existing universal bank or banks, possibly, especially those of us whose funds or monies exceed the 20,000 capped amount and our accounts being credited fully and maybe some restrictions about withdrawals attached to them for some time until all the required bailout funds are secured by government. 
whereby depositors can be rest assured of receiving the full payment of their locked up funds or monies, even if not immediately, maybe in the nearest future possibly. We are of the strongest view and belief that if that is not done, the confidence level of depositors in the financial sector, no matter which tier or subsector it may be, will be will be rejuvenated again and will further help in encouraging the attitude of savings among the citizenry as a whole. But failure to do that may deter depositors from engaging in savings, thereby draining the savings attitude the nation seeks to inculcate into them, rather out of them. The pains and sufferings being endured by the depositors of, the, of these collapsed savings and loans and finance house companies and the microfinance and microcredit companies, their dependents and businesses as a result of the financial sector cleanup exercise cannot be overemphasized. There have been reports of people dying because they couldn't access funds when urgent medical needs arose. Some had to be evacuated out of the country for urgent medical attention but could not access any of their locked up funds or monies from the receiver as at the time and as a result passed away unfortunately.